Our creativity is unique, not primarily because of its form, but because of its prophetic function. Our creativity as Christians, it's unique, not primarily because of its form, not because it's like, wow, that is the most innovative sound. That drum beat must be the sound of heaven. No, no. Our creativity is unique as Christians, not primarily because of its form, but because of its prophetic function. You know, one of the, one of the marks that shows that we've misunderstood the prophetic is that the Bible, the Old Testament, calls someone the greatest prophet who'd ever walked on the earth. But do you know who they name? It's not Isaiah. It's not Jeremiah, it's not Ezekiel, it's not Daniel. Who is it? It's Moses. You're like, Moses? <laughs> like the guy who had the kind of a speech problem, and I mean, he, he taught a lot. He was a good teacher. I mean, the first five books are sort of called the books of Moses because he was such a great, you know, but, but prophet? Didn't he give us the, the Torah, the teaching? He must be a teacher. Why, why would you call him a prophet? Why does the, the Old Testament call Moses the greatest prophet? That's our first clue that we've misunderstood the prophetic. There are two Hebrew words for prophet in the Old Testament. The first one means the seer, the one who sees. The second word means the sayer, the one who says, the oracle, the one who speaks. If we were to put this together, we would say the prophet is the one who sees and then says. Or if you'd like, the prophet sees a different world and says a different word. The prophet sees a different world and then says a different word. So everybody around them is seeing this. And Moses says, no, you know what I see? I see, I don't see slaves. I see a people who are going to go free and worship the Lord their God. And so he says a different word. He says, Pharaoh, God says, let my people go. And Pharaoh's like, I'm sorry, what? Do you know who I am? But the prophet sees a different world and so says a different word. Word. 